complete the, and balance the following equations. All the products are soluble in water. Calcium hydroxide and nitric acid. Calcium hydroxide. Uh, the NO3 nitrate goes to ic, HNO3 therefore is nitrate, nitrate goes to ic, nitric acid, right? All right, so the products here are, the calcium ion is going to become, uh, interact with the nitrate ion now, potassium nitrate, NO3, or calcium nitrate. Calcium has a plus two charge and nitrate has a plus one charge, or minus one, because H plus has a plus one. All right, and the OH and the H, OH minus and the H plus are going to come together to form water. Okay, so we need to balance this equation. We see that we need two hydroxide ions. We're going to need two uh, water molecules over there. One calcium, one calcium, one nitrate, two nitrates. We need two of these. So we can look at the hydrogens. Two here, two there. That's four all together. Four there all together. Oxygens two oxygens, uh, six oxygens, so that's eight oxygens on the left, six here, eight oxygens on the right. Okay, so compare and balance the following equations for each, right, a molecular ionic and net ionic. Okay, so now we draw the ionic equation for this acid base chemical reaction. Well, in an ionic equation, we have calcium, or anything that's um, either a soluble salt or a strong acid. So this isn't an ionic compound. It is an ionic interaction between H plus and NO3, and it is a strong acid, so it's very similar to an ionic compound in terms of how it behaves. We don't call it an ionic compound, we call it a strong acid. So a strong acid is a, basically an ionic compound, it's a special kind though, that has H plus as one of its components. All right, so this is an ionic compound, and calcium plus two, and we'll have two hydroxide ions. Calcium hydroxide will break up into these two compounds. If it's a strong acid, it'll break up. Therefore, it's two H pluses and two NO3 minuses. The products here, this is soluble as well. Uh, aqueous, right? These are all aqueous com uh, compounds, except for this one over here, water. You don't have aqueous water, it's just liquid water, right? You don't have water dissolved in water. And aqueous means dissolved in water, right? So here we have a calcium plus two ion. And then we have two NO3 minus ions, right? Okay, and then we get our two water molecules. Okay, so there's our ionic equation, and the net ionic equation identifies that calcium and nitrate are spectating. Therefore, it's just two OH minuses plus two H pluses to form two H2Os. All right, so that is our net ionic equation. You could go down to 111 if you wanted to, but that's the net ionic equation there. Okay, next we have aluminum oxide. Did I forget to do something there? All right, so we're on review problem 567. We have aluminum oxide, Al2O3, combined with hydrochloric acid. This is a strong acid, and the products are going to be um, aluminum chloride, no, aluminum ion, aluminum ion, Al plus 3, well, that's right, aluminum chloride, AlCl3 plus water, okay? And um, we want to make sure this is balanced. We have two there, uh, six here, uh, let's see, is that right? AlCl3, Al2O3, uh, we have three oxygens here, six chlorines, six chlorines, six hydrogens. We're going to need three there to get six hydrogens. Three oxygens, three oxygens, two aluminum, two aluminum. So two aluminum, two aluminum, six oxygen, six oxygen, one, two, three. No, three oxygen, three oxygen. Six hydrogens, six hydrogens, six chlorine, six chlorine. Okay, so. Aluminum oxide is not solu solid, or it's not uh, soluble. We look at the oxides, aluminum oxide is not soluble. So we have in our ionic equation, Al2O3 solid, plus HCl is a strong acid. So that's gonna be six H plus ions and six Cl minus ions. 
Aluminum chloride is soluble, so we're going to have two Al plus three ions plus three Cl minus ions, and then three waters. All right, so our net ionic equation, we see that the, oh sorry, this is six chlorines here, right? Three times two is six. We see that six chlorines here, six chlorines here. Um, so we see that we're going to have our aluminum oxide plus six hydrogen ions yielding two aluminum ions and three waters. All right, so this is our molecular equation, ionic equation, and net ionic equation. All right, let's double check that one. 567 here. 567, the net ionic equation. B. Aluminum oxide, six protons, three aluminum ions, or two aluminum ions, and three waters. Okay, great. All right. 567 part C. Zinc hydroxide and sulfuric acid, H2SO4. All right. Oh, 567 C. Zinc hydroxide, ZnOH2, plus H2SO4. So this is the sulfate ion naming acids. Eight. Eight ion goes to ic sulfuric sulfuric acid. So zinc hydroxide plus sulfuric acid. And the products of this reaction are going to be um, zinc sulfate, SO4, and uh, water. These hydrogens come with that one, right? So we need to balance this. We're going to have two waters. Um, we have one sulfate, one sulfate, one zinc, one zinc. Oxygens, we have two oxygens, four, not including these. So we have, well, we can, we can include them if we want to. We have six oxygens here, four, five, six oxygens there, two hydrogens here, two hydrogens here, four hydrogens there. Okay, there's our molecular equation. Turn it into an ionic equation. Zinc hydroxide is a um, solid. based on our, periodic, our, our, our solubility rules, right? The hydroxide salts are generally solid, except for a first row and a few second row, right? Or so, first column, alkali metals, then a few alkali earth metals. Okay, so um, H2SO4, it is a strong acid, so that's gonna be two H pluses plus an SO4 minus two. Right, zinc sulfate, that's a soluble compound. Zinc plus two, and uh, SO4, two minus, and then two waters. So our net ionic equation, we can see that the sulfate is on both sides. We have zinc hydroxide plus two acids yields zinc plus two waters. Okay, so that's 467C. Or 567, 567Z, zinc hydroxide, two protons, zinc plus two. Oh, I forgot the plus two charge right there. And then the water. Okay, zinc plus two. All right, 569. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, 569. 569. How would the electrical conductivity of solution of barium hydroxide change as the solution of sulfuric acid is added slowly to it? <clears throat> Good question. Barium hydroxide, sulfuric acid, H2, sulfuric, <coughs> right? Sulfuric. Okay, so ic means it must have come from the 8. 8 goes to ic. So sulfate, and that's the SO4, 2 minus. So there's two protons on sulfur, sulfuric acid. All right, this is called a diprotic acid, two protons on this acid, right? The products of this reaction are going to be barium sulfate, SO4, and um, water, right? Sulfate, sulfate is generally a, what? Soluble compound, but you can look on your uh, solubility rules, right? see that sulfate, although it's generally a soluble compound in the presence of barium, 
sulfate is not soluble. Lead, calcium, strontium, mercury, and barium, right? They're not soluble at sulfates. So that means this is a solid, all right? This is uh, aqueous, it's a strong acid. This is aqueous, so this is a molecular compound, but it's aqueous and it's a strong acid, therefore it's going to be uh, ionized in the ionic equation. So the way to answer the questions in terms of conductivity is to look at the ionic equation because conductivity is due to the number of ions that are in solution. So barium hydroxide is ionic as well and it's soluble, therefore it's water. It's going to have one barium ion, this, this is going to break down into ions, we're going to have two OH minus ions. This is also going to be, it's a strong acid, so we're going to have two H pluses and one SO4 two minus ion. Now on this side we're going to have barium sulfate, solid, and water, liquid. All right, so barium sulfate is not going to supply any ions to the right side or the product side after the product after the reaction is done. Water also supplies no ions. So essentially there's no ions in this product over here, right? But on the left side here, we see that everything is ionic. So there's one element with a plus two charge, one two elements or two compounds with uh, um, components with minus one charge, two with a plus, and then one with a minus two. So lots of ions here, lots of conductivity. But as soon as the reaction occurs, the conductivity disappears because now there's two compounds. It's or one compound in solution, but it's not in solution. It's it's precipitated. It's a solid, and this is just the liquid water. So how will the con electric conductivity change of a solution as a solution of barium hydroxide? or sulfuric acid is added to barium hydroxide, it will go down until <coughs> we run out of barium sulfate or barium hydroxide. And then if we keep adding sulfuric acid, then the conductivity will come back up again, right? Because if we were to just add sulfuric acid to this side, excess, right? Then we'd have the 2H plus ions and the SO4 to minus ions. Does that make sense? So essentially, it doesn't say that you add it until it goes away, it says you add slowly to it. So if you add slowly to it, it'll go down, 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 the conductivity will go down until all the barium hydroxide is consumed. After the barium hydroxide is consumed, the conductivity will start going back up again because it will, um, the hydrogen ions and the sulfate ions from the excess sulfuric acid will contribute to the conductivity. 571. We write balance net ionic equations for the following reactions between nitric acid and potassium carbonate. HNO3 and potassium carbonate, K2CO3. All right. So the products here, again, this is a metathesis reaction in which H is going to go with the carbonate. It's going to be H2CO3. And the potassium is going to go with the nitrate, the KNO3. All right. So we have... To balance this equation, we need to have a 2 here <coughs> and a 2 there. <coughs> All right, so the net ionic equation, is this a strong acid? Yes, it's one of the strong acids, right? HNO3, nitric acid, strong acid. Nitrate goes to ic, nitric acid. So we have two H pluses and two NO3 minuses. And we have two K pluses and we have one CO3 2 minus, right? The product is carbonic acid, H2CO3, and two um, potassium nitrates. We'll do the potassium nitrates first. Two K pluses and two NO3s minuses. Now, H2CO3, when we see that as a product, we have to remember that it doesn't last long in solution. It's called this is the carbonate ion. It's the acid of the carbonate. Eight goes to it. Carbonic acid, right? Carbonic acid, we have to, whenever we see this, we have to know that it breaks down to carbon dioxide and water. All right? So carbon dioxide becomes a gas. Water becomes a liquid. Okay? Or is a liquid. 
So these are all aqueous here, aqueous, aqueous. We look at the net ionic equation, we see the nitrates aren't doing anything, potassium's not doing anything either. We just have two protons, aqueous, or two H plus ions, one carbonate ion, aqueous, coming together to form carbon dioxide, gas, and water liquid. Okay? There we go. And if you want to remind yourself about that, you go ahead and turn to page. 181. Now I'm going to put a marker there because there's a couple other problems coming up in which we're going to have to remember what happens to carbonate or what happens to the, the handful of these compounds when they are uh, react with other compounds, right? These are gas forming compounds. Okay, so 571 is where we're at. So the next one is calcium hydroxide and ammonium nitrate. 571, correct? Calcium hydroxide and ammonium nitrate. Calcium hydroxide and ammonium NH4 and O3. NH4 has a plus one ammonium ion, and nitrate ion has a minus one ion. Hydroxide ion is a minus one. There's two of them for every calcium ion, right? All right, so we have the products here calcium nitrate, CaNO3, and NH4 and no, OH ammonium hydroxide, okay? We have to balance this. We need two hydroxide ions on the right, because we only have one. Um, we need two ammonium now, and oh, this is gonna be CaNO3 too, right? So that is it. Nitrate, we have to remember calcium nitrate. Nitrate is a minus one, calcium is a plus two, so there's two nitrates to form calcium. All right, that's 571, and um, now we want to look at the net ionic equation. Well, this is aqueous. This is aqueous, right? Ammonium ions, ammonium salts are aqueous, or they're not, they don't um, precipitate. This is an aqueous compound here, and this is also an aqueous. Hydroxide ions are generally insoluble, but calcium is one of the exceptions, right? The first column and calcium, barium, and strontium are our on page 176, calcium, barium, and strontium uh, metal hydroxides are not sol are in are, are soluble, soluble, right? They're the exceptions. Hydroxide ions are generally insoluble, but with calcium, barium, or strontium, or group or the alkali metals, they're uh, soluble. Okay? So we have calcium hydroxide, ammonium nitrate, calcium nitrate, and ammonium hydroxide. So uh, no solids, right? So this is not a precipitate forming reaction. So uh, if you don't see a precipitate, you might want to say, oh, this is no reaction. There's no reaction here. But we have to remember that NH4OH, ammonium hydroxide, and we go back to page 170 or 181, we see that when we form ammonium hydroxide, uh, then the ammonia salts will produce ammonia and water. All right? So this will break down to form NH3 and water. All right? And it's going to give us two NH3s and two waters because we have a two up here. So now the net ionic or the ionic equation, we have calcium OH. Oh wait, no, start over. Calcium hydroxide is soluble, so we have a calcium plus two ion plus two hydroxide ions plus two NH4 ammonium ions plus one NO or uh, two nitrate ions yielding two, uh, one calcium plus two ion plus two NO3 minus ions plus two NH3 gas plus two H2O liquid. All right, you see our nitrate and our calcium are our spectator ions. We have two hydroxide ions coming together with two ammonium ions to yield two ammonia ions and two waters. There's our net ionic equation. Okay, so another gas forming product, ammonium hydroxide. Or ammonia salts. Alright, that was 571. Now we're on 573. 
Explain why the following reaction takes place. Why does the following reaction take place? It's chromium chloride and sodium hydroxide going to chromium hydroxide and sodium chloride. So, five seventy three. Well, chromium chloride is soluble. Sodium hydroxide is soluble. Chromium hydroxide, though, hydroxides, and we can use our pure our um, solubility rules again on page one seventy six to remind us that chromium is sorry hydroxide ions are generally form salts when hydroxide ions form salts with compounds they're insoluble unless it's the alkali metals or calcium barium and strontium right so we see that uh, not chromium right chromium is not an exception to that rule so um, chromium hydroxide is going to be insoluble Therefore, the reason why that reaction will take place is because chromium hydroxide will precipitate out and be a solid. 373B, zinc oxide and hydrobromic acid. Hydrobromic acid, HBr, is a strong acid. Zinc bromide is a product and water is a product. So why is this reaction, or why is this a reaction? Because zinc oxide is not soluble. So what this is, is the metal, or yeah, the the compound, zinc oxide, um, being taken apart by hydrogen bromide to form zinc ions and bromide ions and, and water. All right, so the first one for, is a reaction because chromium hydroxide is a solid uh, coming from two aqueous solutions. And the second one's a reaction because zinc oxide is a solid going to, um, to ionic, an ionic compound, zinc bromide. 575, complete and balance the molecular, ionic, and net ion equations for the following reactions. Okay? HNO3, chromium hydroxide. NO3 is the nitrate ion. This is the acid of an 8 ion, therefore it's ic, nitric acid, 8 to ic. Chromium hydroxide, chromium, no, chromium. Oh yeah, chromium hydroxide, OH. So we just talked about chromium hydroxide. This is 575, right? Same thing, yeah. So we just talked about chromium hydroxide, and we said that that is a solid, right? But in the presence of a strong acid like HNO3, all right, then the chromium can be um, ionized to give us the Cr plus 3 ion, or I guess what we just tried is for now the molecular equation, chromium nitrate plus uh, water. All right, so this is our solid, this is aqueous, this is aqueous, this is liquid. Now we have to write our ionic equation. Where we take our eight, oh wait, first we have to balance this equation up here. We have three nitrates, we're gonna need three of these. We're gonna need three waters, uh, hydroxide ion here, uh, chromium, so if we have three, three oxygens here, 9, 10, 11, 12 oxygens on the left, 3, 9, 10, 11, 12 oxygens on the right, 6 hydrogens on the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hydrogens on the left. All right, so now we're balanced. Now we go 3H plus ions plus 3NO3 three three minus ions plus the CrOH chromium hydroxide, chromium 3 hydroxide, solid, right, yielding chromium plus 3 uh, plus 3 NO3 minuses plus 3 H2Os liquid this is aqueous this is aqueous this is solid this is aqueous this is aqueous all right so we have three nitrates and we have that's it right three H pluses plus chromium hydroxide yields chromium ion and water. All right, so 575, let's make sure that one's nothing special that we're missing. Chromium plus three nitrates, wait, what we're missing? Uh, net. Three protons plus chromium hydroxide. Yeah, okay. Uh, 575B, 
perchloric acid and sodium hydroxide, HClO4. sodium hydroxide. Products of this reaction are going to be NaClO4 and H2O. All right, so we just did a metathesis reaction here. All right, so we have um, our molecular equation. Is it balanced? looks balanced. So now we're going to utilize, uh, make the ionic equation, right? Is this a strong acid? It is. So therefore H plus and ClO4 minus are going to ionize in our ionic equation. Sodium plus plus OH minus products Na plus plus ClO4 minus plus H2O. So we see the ClO4 minus and the sodium ion are spectators. And this is just an acid-base reaction, strong acid, strong base, in which the proton comes together with a hydroxide ion to form water. All right, now it seems a little too simple. Let's make sure that we got that one right. 575B. Okay, 575C. Copper hydroxide and acetic acid, or the acetate ion with its proton, right? Copper hydroxide, CuOH, copper. Copper hydroxide plus HC2H3O2. So, um, what we're supposing is supposed to happen here, this copper hydroxide, OH2, is a solid, and um, this is a weak acid, a weak acid. So we're wondering, can the copper hydroxide the H plus here, pull that off of the um, copper hydroxide. 575C. Yeah, so the products here are going to be copper acetate, C2H3O2, and water. Okay? Um, we want to balance this. We're going to need to have a 2 here. We're going to need to have, what else? Uh, this is a, a 2 acetate, so we're going to have a 2 there. All right? 1 copper, 2 acetates, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 oxygens, 4, 5, 6 oxygens, 2, 3, 4 hydrogens, wait. I don't know. So I six, seven hydrogens. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Count that right. Two times three is six, seven, eight hydrogens. One, two, no, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten hydrogens. Okay, so that's balanced. So now we do our ionic equation. Copper hydroxide is a solid. CuOH is not going to ionize in water. Uh, this chemical here is a weak acid, therefore it's not going to ionize in water either. C2H3O2. Um, products here, this is soluble in water, copper plus c 2 h 3O2, we have two of those. Oh, it's a copper plus two ion. Um, we have two of these acetate ions plus two H2Os. So that is our ionic equation. And let's see, that's for 575. 575. Mm. I 
would say that's an iffy problem because acetic acid is a weak acid. So On page 179, you have a weak acid, acetic acid, in, in contact with an insoluble base, and you get magnesium acetate and water. And the net ionic equation contains the acetic acid, the insoluble base, the ion, the acetate ions, and the water. So. This one I would say is a mistake because the net ionic equation in the back of the book, 575, uh, <clears throat> what is this, C? 575 C, the ionic equation shouldn't show the acetate ion and the proton broken up. And the net ionic equation should be the same as the ionic equation. The ionic equation and the net ionic equation should be the same, and this shouldn't be broken up like this. So that's one that has problems, 575. Okay. So, the first person to watch this video can send in, email it to me, identify exactly what the problem is, and you'll get your extra credit points, right? Okay, so, um, where are we at? We're on 575, part what? D, zinc oxide and H2SO4. Zinc oxide and sulfuric acid. So here we have a strong acid, insoluble oxide base, or uh, insoluble metal oxide. So this is a solid, right? Zinc oxide is a solid. This is aqueous. Products here are going to be uh, zinc sulfate, SO4, and H2O, right? Okay. So this is an aqueous. So this is aqueous compound, this is a liquid, right? And the um, net, or the ionic equation, zinc oxide is not going to break up. Uh, H2SO4 is a strong acid, therefore it's going to be two H pluses. Oh, whoops, we forgot to balance this. We forgot to balance it before we move on, or was it already balanced? Zinc, zinc, two protons, two protons, four, five oxygens, four, five oxygens, Sulfate, sulfate. Okay, so it was already balanced. So we have um, zinc oxide plus two H pluses plus SO4 two minus, right? Yields zinc plus two plus SO4 two minus plus H2O. Our ionic equation, our net ionic equation, we see that zinc oxide, we cross out the spectators, right, plus two protons yields zinc ion plus two, or know, plus one water. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, that's 575D. 577, write the balanced molecular ionic and ionic ionic equation for the pairs of reactants. If all cancel, all ions cancel, indicate that there's no reaction takes place. Okay, so same thing that we've been doing, but this one now has some options of having no reactions occurring, right? So sodium sulfite and barium nitrate. And we also have to predict what the, identify what the uh, reactions and products are just based on the information, not on the chemical equation. So sodium sulfide, N-O, or sorry, N-A, sodium, N-A, sulfite. So this isn't sulfate, this isn't sulfide. Sulfate, SO4, sulfide, S2 minus, right? So it's not sulfate, it's not sulfide, it's not sulfate, it's not sulfide, it's sulfite. 
SO3 2 minus. Okay? So we have SO3 2 minus, um, sodium and barium nitrate. And a 2 SO3 and barium NO3 nitrate. And so barium is a plus 2 ion, so we have to have two nitrates. Products of this are going to be NaNO3 and BaSO4, barium sulfate. We have the need of two of those, and I think that's it, right? Oh, no, this isn't sulfate, this is sulfite, SO3. So, sodium sulfites. Sulfites are generally soluble. If you look at your solubility table, sulfites. Oh, no, sorry, insoluble. Sulfites are generally insoluble, but we have our sodium, right? So this one is soluble. Sodium sulfite, soluble. Barium nitrate, nitrates are soluble. So these are both aqueous. Okay? And sodium nitrate is aqueous, but sulfite, again, is not generally soluble, and barium is not one of the exceptions there, right? So it says the sulfites are soluble except for group 1A and ammonia, right? So, solid. So uh, the net ionic equation is going to be barium plus the sulfite, SO3 plus 2, 2SO3, SO3, 2 minus product, barium, sulfite, solid, right? Net ionic equation, 2 and A pluses. SO3 2 minus, uh, barium 2 plus, 2NO3 minuses, yielding Na plus, NO3 minus, we have two of those each, right? And we have uh, our barium sulfite. All right, 577. Write that molecular ionic and ionic and net ionic. So that's what we need. Okay, 577B, formic acid and potassium carbonate. Formic acid, so that's HCHO2 and potassium carbonate. Okay? products here. This hydrogen is going to go with the carbonate to form carbonic acid. Um, CHO2 has a, if you see that this was the acid part, then you know that the CHO2 has a minus one charge, right? That's the formate ion. So it's going to form potassium formate. K2CHO2. Oh no. KCHO2, right? Potassium has a plus one charge, formate has a minus one charge. But we need to have two of these, because we have two of those over here. Carbonate, H plus, we have to have two of these over here. Okay, so this product, this is aqueous, this is aqueous, this is aqueous, this is aqueous as well, but there's something special about the carbonic acid, right? Carbonic acid in solution is going to break down to form H2O and carbon dioxide, all right? So in our net ionic equation, or our ionic equation, we're going to have two potassiums and two formate ions, CHO2 minus there. Uh, we're going to have two potassium ions here and one carbonate ion, um, two H. Oh wait, this is a weak acid, therefore it's not going to break down in the ionic equation, so it's just going to be 2HCHO2 uh, aqueous. All right, it does dissolve in water, but it's not going to break down. So our net ionic equation, the only difference is the, yes, the only difference is the potassium ions. So we have 2HCHO2, formic acids plus carbonate ion yielding water and carbon dioxide plus two acetate ions. Not acetate, but um, formate ions. 
All right, so the only spectator in that equation was our potassium ion. All right, so that was 577B, 577C, ammonium bromide and lead acetate. Ammonium bromide lead acetate. Products of this reaction are going to be ammonium acetate and lead bromide, right? PBBR2, lead 2 acetate, is that what it says? Yeah. PBBR2 and ammonium acetate, C2H3O2. All right. Well, ammonium bromide. Or uh, this is aqueous. This is aqueous, soluble. Acetate ions are soluble. Bromide ions are generally soluble, but not with lead. Lead is a uh, salt. Halogens are generally soluble salts, but not with lead. So that's an exception there. So this is a solid, and this is an ammonium salt, ammonium acetate. Okay. So um, if you look at your section about ammonium salts, you have a little thing there. B. In writing a metathesis metathesis reaction, you may be tempted sometimes to write ammonium hydroxide as a formula for ammonium hydroxide. This compound does not exist in water. It is nothing more than a solution of ammonia. Okay? So, um, when ammonium hydroxide is formed, you're going to get ammonia gas. But this is not ammonium hydroxide, so we don't have to worry about that. This is just going to be an aqueous compound. Right? So, our ionic equation, wait, do we have to balance this first? Um, you know, we don't need to parentheses there for that. This is just a one acetate, one ammonium ion. Um, but we do need two acetate ions, so we need this two there, we need that two there, and that gives us two bromides. Okay, so now, ionic equation, two NH4, two ammonium ions, two Br minus, two bromide ions, one lead ion, two C2H3O2 acetate ions, lead bromide is a solid, insoluble, two NH4 plus ammonium ions, two C2H3O2 minus uh, acetate ions, all right? The acetate ions, the ammonium ions, we have 2Br minus plus Pb lead 2 plus yielding lead bromide solid. 2 bromide solid. So that is our net ionic equation. All right. D, I feel uh, no reaction coming on, right? This is the last one, and, they, and it, we haven't found one yet. Ammonium perchlorate uh, and copper nitrate. Ammonium, NH4, NH4 perchlorate, ClO4, plus copper 2 nitrate. Nitrate, right? Yeah, NO2, and there's going to be two of those because a nitrate has a minus 1 charge. So that means we have NH4 plus uh, the nitrate, NH4, NO3, um, and then the CuClO4 minus, uh, or CuClO4, copper perchlorate. All right, and this we need two of these. All right, so we need two of these, and we need two of these, and that should do it for us. All right, so there's our molecular equation. This is soluble or aqueous, right, soluble. This is aqueous, soluble. This is aqueous. And the perchlorate, do you remember what the perchlorate does? Perchlorate is, where does it say it? All salts contain ammonium, nitrite, nitrate, perchlorate, chlorate, and acetate are soluble. Okay, so there it is, all soluble, no reaction.
right? And we were right, we got one no reaction in there, right? All right, so that's 577. 